Hi, I'm International Grandmaster Ron W. Henley and welcome to our continued coverage of Round 2 of the World Chess Olympiad being played in Istanbul, Turkey. The third and final game I want to take a look at from this round features Super Grandmaster Nigel Short in the match England against Brazil. Playing the white side of the Grand Prix attack, Nigel sacrificed a pawn in the opening and has fantastic compensation. As we can see, two beautifully centralized knights, the open A file, and the black king stuck in the middle. Plus, the black pieces don't really have any good targets in the white camp. Everything's pretty tight and right. So, let's take a look. Nigel plays rook a7 check. King d8, and now, interesting moment. Plays a very enterprising knight to g5, and shows that the pin on his knight is actually a relative pin. Note first off that I'm a very, very big fan of Queen Sacrifices. Having done two books, World Chess Champion Tactics, Volume 1 and Volume 2, now available at onlinechesslessons.net, and each one contains 100 Queen Sacrifices and all, all the Queen Sacrifices I could find from couple of world champions. So I totally love queen sacrifices. However, one of the criteria I use in my book is that the queen sacrifice should be the objectively best move, and in most cases, I like it if it's the only way to win. In this case, while I admire Nigel's knight to g5, I have to say that queen d2 is very simple, very geometric, and totally winning. Powerful threat of queen a5 check, and the side light threat of queen to g5 check, which just simply overwhelm the black resources. And this move has a certain amount of geometric appeal, I have to say. However, Nigel saw a different light and played knight to g5. Black played knight h6, covering the f7 square. Obviously on knight g5, Nigel was hoping for queen takes e2, knight f7 check, king c8, and nice rook plus knight mate with rook c7 mate. That was the dream. After knight g5, black probably best move was to play rook e7, although after knight f7, rook f7, queen e5, bishop e5, rook f7, white still has a pretty easy technical win. So in the game, after knight g5, Black decided to cover the h6 square. After the exchange of queens and rook e1, we can see even though white is still a pawn down, but his forces have fantastic compensation and coordination. After bishop f4, knight e6 check forks the king, forks the bishop, and after rook c8, rook e4 protects the rook, and white has multitude of threats. Threatens to capture on c5, the f4 bishop's on pre, the h7 pawn is under attack, so not only has white recouped his pawn, but there's more on the way. After bishop e3 check, Nigel played king f1. However, also winning was rook takes e3. Note that d takes e3, rook c7 is the same mate we saw before. Therefore, after rook e3, rook b5 would be necessary, but then of course pawn takes pawn takes, and we have a rook plus knight ending, but rook a8 check reduces down to just a pure knight ending, and after b7, black is hard pressed to stop the b pawn. In fact, he has to sacrifice a pawn here in order to do that, because note that king d7, b b7, and it's too late. So therefore, after b6, he would have to play e2, king f2, knight check, and then scurry back with the knight, but he would be a solid two pawns down, pretty easy pickings for white in the knight ending. However, after bishop e3 check, Nigel again saw a different path and simply played king over to f1. After rook b6, plucked a pawn with knight takes c5, and on rook e4, knight e4, we can see white has netted an extra pawn, and the pawn on h7 is indefensible as well. Black played king d8, and after rook h7, white is now two solid pawns ahead. Knight g4, h3, and now of course, knight e5, king e2 would be slightly preferable, but 
In an effort to confuse things after h3, black played knight h2 check. And after king e2, suddenly we can see the black knight on h2 is a wee bit off sides. So he starts the rescue operation with g5, but now Nigel very cleverly plays g4 and switches gears from trying to exploit the black king to playing against the trapped knight. Black tries to coordinate his forces with rook to the a-file, hoping to slap in rook check, and suddenly his rook, knight, and bishop all be working. However, rook a7, excellent play, keeping this knight under lock and key over here. After rook h6, now black hopes to capture on h3 and again free his knight, but root awakening in the form of knight to d6, and suddenly we realize that if rook takes h3, knight to c5, knight takes g4, freeing the knight, However, knight e6 check mate, or, if you prefer, the mate with rook to d7 checkmate. So after knight to d6, not being able to take on h3 was an unpleasant awakening. Black played rook e6, but then c5. And on bishop f4, the white king comes over to begin the hunt on the black knight. Again, remember, in the endgame, the king has an attack and defensive value of three and a half points. Here, black captures on d6, and realizing that white has threats of king g2, as well as knight g5, or knight c5, or rook check, followed by knight c5 check, black has one last sleeve, one, one last swindle up his sleeve here, and tries knight takes g4 check, and rook takes d6. Of course, he's hoping for knight d6 stalemate. However, after rook takes d6, the ever-vigilant Nigel Short plays rook a8 check, simply leaving the rook and the king both under attack, and black resigned. A very sweet performance by Super Grandmaster Nigel Short. <laughs>